Hello and good morning everyone. We're at um, video number five and this one is called Placing Taxiways and Polygons. Until now this was all fun and games. This was all uh, Uncle Jan in storytelling mode. Uh, but uh, now we're really going to pick up the pace. This is, uh, we're now getting to the bread and butter of uh, making scenery with wet. So far you learned enough to, uh, well, get started to uh, import the airport and uh, change some of its attribute, uh, place the runway, stuff like that, the boundary and so on. And here you can see the result of what we did so far. Now um, you can see that this is the airport that we changed because obviously the end does not line up here anymore. And there's uh, the windsock, uh, hard to see from this altitude over here. But I zoomed out this far to show you the boundary. This is not the boundary that we placed. This is the boundary that was in uh, effect before already. And you can see here there's a, a gradual, a blendy type of uh, edge to it. And uh, this is the the you know grassy looking area that I talked about and obviously this is uh, the off airport area and you can see here the effect that I talked about see where the boundary is uh, encompassing these roads there are no um, buildings on the roads whereas there are buildings over here and it's the same over here you can see buildings and uh, well the boundary crosses here so this is maybe not a great example but over here you can see that really well and you will also see that there are no trees inside the boundary um, obviously they would have liked to grow over here but the boundary takes the trees away and keeps the airport free of trees which is what we want and um, another well, again, I just wanted to iterate. This is not the boundary we placed. This is the boundary that was in effect already. And um, even though our airport now suppresses the the old default KTTA, um, it does not suppress the boundary. The boundary is baked into the terrain. Even if we would change this airport totally and move it over here or so, you'd still see this green patch over here. And you would see this the same, very same green patch until they make new scenery for x -Plane. 12 and then again for x -plane 13 and so on. This is how long it takes until the new boundary goes into effect. And um, <clears throat> another thing I want to mention, when you start looking at your airport in x -plane to test it, and you will do so frequently, make sure that you have selected um, the number of world objects maximum. This is something that we see again and again. People don't have very beefy machines. They move this down. x -Plane runs great, um, but then they upload it and Julian checks and he sees some trees on the taxiway or trees somewhere uh, or, you know, houses in, in going, growing basically where they shouldn't be. And uh, this is due to people not testing with maximum rendering settings. You want to do that so you will see everything that could possibly infringe on your airport project. I already showed you this website. It's the developer.x-plane.com website. And um, it's unlikely that you'll be able to remember everything that I tell you in this video. You can watch it again and again, of course. But if you want to have a slightly different view on things, it's always good to go to the x -Plane developer website. You get the blog. They always get great new um, info here. And um, of course, they have all these tabs up here. And one of the most important tabs is certainly, well, scenery tools, we saw that already where you would download World Editor, but there's the documentation tab. And if you go down to scenery, you have the manuals, and um, this is for the old versions, don't mess with these, but here's the latest wet manual online. And this is invaluable. It's, it's really kept up to date. It's got a great table of contents, and you can uh, basically read everything that I tell you is also explained here. You can see all these uh, you know, buttons, what they do, what, how to properly call the paints. This is the hierarchy paint, for example, I keep calling it something else, but um, they explain everything here. And um, if you're more the, the reading guy, instead of the sit and listen guy, then this is certainly a great, great uh, tool. And um, I can uh, only recommend it uh, with the highest degree of uh, emphasis. Please uh, go here, read it. It's got all these links that you can jump right away and, um, you know, 
this 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 is a really really great compliment to whatever i tell you especially since it's kept up to date whereas i'm only redoing my videos like every uh, you know feels like week but uh it, it's basically every half year or year or so whenever it's warranted because the wet keeps evolving so and this is uh the the one part of the scenery development documentation and you can also scroll down. There's some more tutorials here. Um, there's some guides. This is very important. Check the dates. Some of these are pretty dated, uh, 2015. They're still valid, but um, you know, the more current, of course, the more they reflect what we um, are just having right now. Here, tips and tricks, a very important section. Uh, go through all this stuff once you watched my videos and want to, you know, dive into this a little bit deeper. And then another very important section, reference. We'll get to this later, embankment and piers, customizable jetways, terminal kit, and so on. Um, this is geeky stuff here. You don't uh, probably want to mess with it if you're a normal person, but um, the rest of this is, is very, very important. So uh, give it a try and look through this. And of course, there's uh, other stuff here too that you can look at. Um, pretty neat. I um, also want to emphasize the importance of doing some detective work when you uh, build an airport. Of course, there's always Wikipedia and it uh, has information about your airport. It also often has links. Um, there's a Sky Vector link. We've been using this one all the time. And um, <clears throat> there are some other uh, great websites like AirNav here. Uh, they also have uh, lots and lots of information on the airport, on you know, the runways, pretty much similar to what we saw at SkyVector, but it uh, never hurts to uh, check a couple different websites. You want to build your airport as close to the real thing as possible, of course. And then for airports in the United States, you have the FAA website. Um, they do also hand out lots and lots of information. It's not always so easy to navigate. Uh, it takes a little practicing, but you, know, you get all these uh, things here. For example, I searched for uh, our airport rally and you can, for example, download um, an approach plate and uh, this would also have a little uh, airport diagram and you can see, for example, this little P says there is a precision visual glide slope indicator, a PAPI, and there's also one on the other side. Remember, I wasn't sure if there was, but obviously there is. So, um, you, you know, this is also important information. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, is enough about your online resources. Let's go back to wet and let's go back to the main purpose of this video. Closing all the stuff, here's wet, fire it up. We're going to place surfaces. I'm uh, specifically not saying polygons because in the context of our little airport building here, um, it's important to uh, make the distinction between taxiways and polygons. Well, the first, the taxiways go to the airport dot file. Remember the old file, while as, whereas the polygons go to the DSF. Uh, that's that's one of the differences. And um, you can basically say the taxiways are um, areas that are used wherever the airplanes are supposed to go beside the runway. Um, so for regular taxiways, for aprons, all this stuff uh, is going to be done with taxiways, whereas the polygons is for all other uh, surfaces. We already talked about, let me uh, fire up the slippy map here. We already talked about a shoulder if there's, there's none here, but if you have one, that would be something that you would do with a polygon. And the same thing, let's look at uh, this stuff here. Um, obviously, this would be taxiway. That's where airplanes go. Uh, this would be a polygon because that's a parking lot for cars. And uh, same here, polygon, parking lot for cars, taxiways, taxiways. This is all taxiways. Um, this one, I'm not so sure. I don't think airplanes would go back here. This is probably an access road for cars. So uh, this is polygon stuff, uh, polygon over here. And also these little roads here, these roads that go to, um, you know, the glide slope antenna, everything like this. This is all polygons because planes would never go on here. Um, very important 
do not use taxiways to emulate roads or to emulate gravel parking lots. I know that the choice of polygons that we have is limited. You don't get gravel, you don't get sand, and but we do have gravel taxiways and we have sand taxiways or dirt. And it's tempting to use that to emulate these areas maybe or you know a gravelly parking lot, but don't do it. Um, nowadays, it's uh, grounds for rejecting your scenery. Uh, it messes with the way that uh, X plane displays your airport ports and uh, figures out where airplanes can go and uh, that's why we don't want to do it you will get more choices of polygons in the future i'm sure uh, but for now just use whatever we have and i'll show you what we have here in a minute and um, also i'm uh, going to tell you some other things that are absolutely no go nowadays with polygons uh, we we had to learn the hard way um, do not paint with polygons people used to uh, go really 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 wild with um, how intricate they, they they would model stuff and um, it's 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 fine to place you know polygon that traces the outline of this parking lot yeah, that is okay but don't use uh, 100 nodes to really follow every little brick here some people are really really great scenery designers they put a lot of effort into it but what it what happens is especially in vr it makes uh it increases the rendering load so much that uh, these airports do not uh, display well in VR or actually they can't be used in VR because the frame rate tanks. There's uh, some exceptions. You are allowed to paint, you know, you would painting would be called if you see the SanfordLee.co or what or the Sanford Lee Co or whatever it is. You could trace that with polygons if you don't make them like 100 polygons here for the S. You know, do one, two, three, four, five like this, maybe 20 or so. Uh, that would be okay because we say this is an, it's a very, very distinctive thing on this airport. If they had like 100 words all over, don't do it because they would overdo it. But, you know, just putting in the airport name, modeling that with polygons, that would be okay. Um, also, I like to use polygons, use select polygons to make these little white, uh, you know, areas here that uh, denotes where the windsock is um, there's another way to do it we'll we'll do that later on but that would also be okay at a small scale don't overdo it always keep in mind that every node you place will increase the rendering load on your airport this is a small airport tiny in comparison to some of the bigger ones but uh, still it helps to uh, get into the habit of not making way more notes than uh, is really necessary and uh, we'll talk about that later as we start placing stuff for for real and the other no-go is placing polygons on the runway some people you know i talked about how these uh, textures move when the runway is not at the correct or at the exact length that the texture was made for and um, the touchdown markers move back and forth now people started to just fashion these touchdown markers with polygons and also the center line with polygons and of course you would get a very accurate uh, texture that way but um, again this is considered painting with polygons and especially once we get to better textures uh, this would have to get removed again and um, we don't want that. So you will even get a warning in WED as soon as your uh, polygons go over the runway. And if they do just a tiny, tiny bit, maybe have a little bit of overlap here, then you can wave the warning and Julian will get the warning as well when he checks your airport and he says, yeah, this is just a little bit, that's fine. But if uh, he sees that you really painted onto the runway to make these marks or whatever, then he would say, you know, looks nice, but sorry, doesn't work. And another last thing no go is when you uh, make taxiways and you are close to roads with the taxiways be very careful here's why if um, lamina research does the next scenery recut for x -Plane 12 for example it will cut off all roads that touch taxiways this is you know 
desired because sometimes you have roads that run right across an airport and as soon as the road hits a you know runway or a taxiway it gets just cut off right here and cut off right here so you don't have cars going over your runway you don't have cars going over your taxiways but the downside is if you take a taxiway and make this you know nice little road because you don't know any better and then the recut sees that the road is you know touching the taxiway it will just nuke the road it's gone from the scenery for you know for the whole run of x plane 12 and um it, it will not come back even if you remove the airport it will stay it's baked into the terrain so to say just like the boundary is baked into the terrain and um, you have killed that road for at least the the run of x plane 12 and if the airport is not corrected uh, until eternity so stay away with taxiways once you get close to roads and uh, there's there are very very few uh, exceptions to this let's see um, this road goes all the way down here and maybe um, you know that x plane has taken the open street map roads to to make roads during the scenery recut and maybe it was modeled wrong it's a little long then you could say hey it's getting cut off right here at this apron edge that's fine and, and that is fine and uh, that's a desired effect basically but again if you make a taxiway that you say oh I'm, you know i'm going to just extend this taxiway over here well it's going to cut off the road that goes down here and that's not something that we want okay now enough of the chatter let's uh, place a taxiway and um, of course i've done that before you've seen it it's really easy you pick the taxiway tool and you place a taxiway you click left click left click left click left click left and when you click on that little circle again that's where you start it the whole thing gets closed and um it's it's kind of hard to see i did that before as well i'm going to change the pavement transparency here to solid for a minute and here it is it looks kind of brownish why is that because it's still selected remember that yellowish u thing if i click on the vertex tool and click somewhere else you can see here it's, it's selected i click and it's gone and um it's not yellowish anymore and you can see that it's it's a text and now where did i put it i have no idea um what did I select before? Airport stuff, da, 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 da. here, it's right here. Um, obviously I still had the windsock selected or that was the last thing I had selected. Remember that was the problem. I didn't pay attention, so I will do it better. Um, going to collapse all these things again and I'll, I'll just select the airport for now place a taxiway one two three four five or whatever how many nodes and here it is right above everything that i selected which was everything so right here it is and if i click the vertex tool you see that um, those nodes turn greenish or bright green again which means this is the selected taxiway you can see it down here if i click somewhere else it's unselected if i click in the middle it is selected if i click on the edge it's selected and um important distinction here when you select stuff this will uh, fool you again and again uh, as it has me in the beginning there's a difference when you have um, you know the vertex tool selected there's a difference between selecting an, all the nodes you know I can hold down control to select many of them or I can select all of them there we go now all the nodes are selected but i just selected the nodes i didn't select the polygon see this all these nodes are selected but if i click in the middle now i have selected this sorry i said polygon this taxiway you know now i have the taxiway if i click and hold i can move the taxiway if i select all the nodes i can click and hold nothing happens um, also important later on when we duplicate you want to make another one that looks just like that if you if you go oh i'm just going to grab my text away here and i'm i'm duplicating it then you have duplicated all these nodes and but you cannot you know select the text away and then duplicate it and then move it so this is something important look at the outline it turns orange and of course we have the yellowish hue when you select something once the whole taxiway is selected orange outline with green nodes when you select nodes only you just get the green nodes but the outline is not yellowish or the, the, the surface is not yellowish and the outline is not um, orange either now 
um, these are taxiways and let's place just to compare it let's place a polygon the polygons are under lib and airport and pavement they call these pavement but they're called dot pole all these are dot pole if you can't find them just uh, you know type in asphalt or concrete because we only have asphalt and concrete and if you click on these you get a little preview down here uh one dark one light two dark two light three dark three light and so on they get brighter the same with concrete one dark and then the brightest one is concrete six light this is almost as whitish so you can use it to make um you know these these white marks over here for example just experiment with it the preview does not look exactly like what you would get in explain it's a little bit um an experimentation thing now let's place a uh let's go with a 1d the dark asphalt i'm going to place it right next to it here so any shape that you like click and here we go now i got one asphalt underscore one d polygon and one taxiway you can rename these to whatever you want whatever shows up here is just the name you can call that uh, grandmother and it doesn't matter you can call this taxiway uh, a or oops here we go it doesn't matter it's just the name the the beef of, of what we have here is down here again in the property pane. You can see I selected this taxiway and it's a taxiway, da, da, da. Here's the surface. You can switch the surface to concrete. You can switch it to grass, um, all with the yellowish hue right now. But if you unselect it, um, then you can see now this would be the dirt and so on. You get all these different options. Transparent doesn't really do anything. People think, well, I'm going to place a you know an invisible taxi way and that enables me to taxi smoothly no transparent is just very misleading it's just you know nothing i don't i don't know why they they put that there it has no effect on the plane it uh isn't it can't be seen in the simulator i don't know uh, i'm sure there's a good reason but i haven't found it out out about it um just don't worry but uh snow also is not slippery as you would think um these all kind of like behave the same i think you get a different sound when you go over gravel uh stuff like that but um yeah you can you can pick the surface if you click on the polygon you can see you can't um both have a heading and um, this is the texture heading if you look at these little lines here if i go to let's say zero they switch then now they're straight north south and this is a tool to if you want to have many uh, surfaces taxiways next to each other and you want them to uh, not look like they're joined then you can play with the texture heading to make that look different in the simulator and of course this one also has a texture heading um, it's just not called texture heading but you can see uh, if you look really close you know it, these lines change as well um it works just like the texture heading is just called heading now both have a resource um but here the resource is not shown um here the resource is where you would find it in uh the you know resource in the in the folders in explain it's or actually in this uh this library pane over here uh lib um airport pavement lib airport pavement and then asphalt now if you want to change this if you want to change the taxiway we saw that you just switch to concrete if you want to change this you would have to switch the resource and um let's say i want to change this from 1d i found uh, this this one is too dark i want to change it to asphalt 3d you can see up here is the resource click control copy click control paste and you can see it change to 3D pole. And if I hit return, it changes. This is how you would change your surface of a polygon later on. Um, just switch the resource. And of course, you can do that for many, many. If you have done your whole airport with 1D and you think it's too dark, just select them all. If you have them all in one folder, you can do that here. Or you can click and hold down Control like I do here. You know, Control, just like in Windows selects one or both and then uh, you can batch change them and this is also an important concept for wet you can always batch change stuff that uh, comes in very very handy now um, priority of displaying taxiways and polygons is also very important if i have this taxiway and i push it over here um, the runway will be 
over the taxiway when you fire up the simulator. If I take the polygon, the polygon will be over the runway. The polygon will be over the taxiway. If you have many taxiways over each other, um, it, it depends on which one is drawn first. You can't always say that even if you sort them up here, same for polygons, uh, it's, it's kind of random. So do not place taxiways over each other um, and do not place polygons over each other. Uh, that's not, not going to work very well. And um, the same thing if you have polygons over your roads, nothing happens. The road will be shown over the polygon, uh, which is great for making, you know, if you have a big industrial area, uh, you can use the polygon uh, to get rid of all the grass, but um, the roads are still there. And um, the same would happen for taxiways until the next scenery recut. And remember, I said, do not put taxiways anywhere near the roads. So, um, you know, you can put them near the roads like here you would, but uh, don't put them over the roads because that would kill them on the next scenery recut. Um, another important, important difference between taxiways and polygons is taxiways have the convenient um, feature i'm going to move this back here so it's not so confusing have the convenient feature that you can not only change the surface over here you can also change the outline attributes now right now i have none selected but if i click on here you can see it gives me all these options let's say i want to have my outline solid yellow um, it's kind of hard to see now i'm going to click somewhere else and i move in and you see here you see the little greenish line that's just the outline of the polygon Oh, that's not shown in sim but you can see it has a yellowish uh, line now if i change this to let's say double solid yellow this is a typical line that you would get on uh, the edge of a taxiway and as you move out you switch from 3d this is a 3d preview this is what you would see in the simulator if you move out eventually changes to a symbolic view uh, this is um, like see here, this is the ILS critical center line. You would see the symbolic preview. And as you zoom in, you would get the actual 3D view. So here you have a million options of, um, you know, making an outline here that uh, you can pick and choose. And you can also pick a light attribute outline. For example, most obviously we'll have the taxiway edge lights. And you can see, Again, here's the symbolic preview, little blue dots. And as you move in, you see where the actual lights would be placed in the simulator when you later on run it. Now, obviously, this uh, is very convenient for making taxiways. You can see this happened here. You know, they have the bluish outline. As I zoom in, you can see the individual lights. You can see how this would look like. And if I zoom out, you get the symbolic uh, preview again. And um, you can also see the taxiway goes over here and it doesn't have any lines or lights over here. How did they do that? Well, easy. You just pick one node. Did you remember how we placed it? We went um, counterclockwise and this node is controlling the properties of this edge. So if I say I don't want lights here, I just go none and you can see the lights are gone. If I want to have a broken white line on this edge, I just switch to broken white. And this is this is how you do it. You would place your taxiways one continuous area, and then you just go through the nodes and you say this one and hold down control. This one have no lights. And again, if you just change one, this this one stays. But if you hold down control while you click, you'd batch change and you can see this one has no lights, this one has no lights. This is all you need to know about the nodes. Um, they are numbered automatically. This one is node one, node two, and so on. And um, they also have some, some more properties which you will basically never really worry about. The polygon cannot have any line attributes or outline attributes, neither lines nor um, lights. You can use that and you can you know manually uh, add lights as a line or um, an outline too as as an airport line or a line we'll get to that later but uh, this is what makes a taxiway so convenient to use for making taxiways because you can choose the outline i'm going to show you 
we already talked about selecting stuff, you know, selecting individual nodes uh, versus selecting the whole thing. Now we've done this with a vertex tool so far. The vertex tool is okay for, you know, moving the whole thing and it's okay for moving individual nodes. Just click on them. You know, I missed that click to highlight and click and drag and you can see you can really move well um, you know the individual nodes here and another thing that you can do is if you want to move a side you can grab the side and you can see you can move grab the side if you don't want to um, have a change shape you hold down control grab the side and now you can see i'm moving up and down nothing happens but you can basically stretch out just one side it's not really working well because it's not rectangular but if it is uh, which you know these surfaces often are then holding down control is great now this is what you would do with a vertex tool why use the marquee tool the marquee tool is great when you want to move many things at once or, or work on many things at once. Let's select the polygon here again. I click on it. You see I get the vertex tool. Of course, you can move it. We, we, that's something that we could do before. You can grab one side and you can, you know, stretch like this and this. This is something that we couldn't do with the vertex tool. You can just make it stretch like this, stretch like this. That's something that we couldn't do. And of course you can hold down the control key and then you can proportionally increase or decrease, which is very good. See, I, I cannot, you know, twist or change the shape, but I can make it bigger and smaller. That's, that's something. And probably the most important thing to do with a vertex tool is if you hold down the alt key, you can see that the edges turn to little arrows. Now, if you grab an arrow and you can pull that out for finer control again, now you can rotate the whole thing. And this is the big advantage of the marquee tool. You can rotate, uh, stretch and resize much better than with a vertex tool, or you can do it at all with a vertex tool. If you just want to move these three, you can do that as well. See, I selected these three nodes with the marquee tool and you can move those together. This is something else that you couldn't do with a vertex tool. Um, you can even rotate them. See, like this. And uh, yeah, so this, this is a very versatile tool as well. And again, if you select just a few nodes, you can work on these nodes. If you grab all the nodes, and here's a, a, a big distinction. If you grab all the nodes with the marquee tool, you grab the whole polygon. And that was different with the vertex tool. If I grab all these with the vertex tool, I cannot move the whole polygon. Um, I'm just, I can just move these individual nodes. So experiment a little bit with that vertex, the V key, uh, bar key, M key, really easy to remember. And of course, once you select it, you can switch back and forth with the keys or by clicking up here as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about adding and removing nodes. Of course, uh, let's say you made this taxiway and you really find out, okay, it doesn't have this bump over here at all. It's just a straight line. Easy, select, hit the delete key, it's gone. Or you find, well, this was stupid. I you know, want to redo that. Of course, you could do control Z, but maybe you find out, oh, I need two more nodes over here. So a couple options. One is to select both of these, hold down control, select both, and then pick split, control E, and it adds another node right in the middle. Now I have these three nodes selected. I hit control E again. I get more and more and more. So you get all these nodes over here. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to select the polygon, hold down the alt key, and then click somewhere near the edge and you can see here you can just click and add nodes wherever you want and uh, that's also convenient but you have to have uh, the polygon or the, the area that you want to work on selected otherwise wet does not know where to add the nodes and if you if you've done that or if you you know place these manually maybe you find that uh, you know, you were kind of sloppy. Look, this is not a very nice straight line, but you want it to be a straight line. So what you would do is you would select all of these and then you tell WED to edit and align. Control L and you see they 
go back to a very nice smooth line. This is sometimes helpful if you make a long taxiway and um, you know you you look down the taxiway in explain you see well you you weren't so perfect with going straight then you can align the the edge and you know there are a couple uses to do that. Another uh, good use uh, for is to make a regular polygon right here you can see uh, i try to make a square i'm not very good at this and you can say for example orthogonalize nice word if i click that you see it turns it into a perfect rectangle um, another thing let's uh, remove these delete uh, another thing is making an extra note here i can pick the option make a regular poly and of course it turns it into you know another square again but there are the other options when you when you don't uh, you want a perfect square you would use that one if you have like an outline for a building let's say you trace the, the building here and it looks like this oops there we go like this and you were kind of sloppy and you say well this is kind of you just go okay uh, ortho, ortho, you know, whatever it is. And then suck, you have a nice um, thing. And if you find out, well, this one is not lining up with this one perfectly, you could grab it like this, but mess it up. Or you could just go hold on control and then you can move it up and down. It's, it's very, very versatile. Another thing that you want to um, look at is how to split your area let's say you have this big taxiway but you know this is not what you wanted you want to split it so you just pick two nodes this one and this one and again you go edit split and you see now this polygon or this uh yeah polygon is split from this polygon they're both called grandmother still uh but again whatever you know they're called up here doesn't matter at all now you say okay this this was kind of stupid i uh, want to redo it so what you would do and now pay attention we are uh, talking about another very important concept is snapping nodes um you can see if i zoom in i can take this node and i can move it very far over here and i zoom in some more and i can try to move it as close as possible now it's it's really on top now it's almost you know very very hard to see you can see the scale down here this is one inch so it's it's like one hundredth of an inch to this one and you would say okay this is this is a perfect match but if you fire up explain you may find that these actually end up a couple centimeters apart and and then what happens is you sometimes you have this gap between your polygons where you can see the grass and and it looks really stupid why is that because um, WED has a much finer grained mechanism of storing locations. WED doesn't have a problem with storage size. They um, have the XML file and they really have a very, very precise positioning for every node and everything. Whereas Explain, having all these billions and billions of nodes all over the world, can't afford to store that so finely grained. So um, the way to tell Explain, okay, listen, I want these two nodes to be in the exact same spot, even if you know they're not in the exact spot, but I want them both moved together so that they're always together, so that there's no gap between them is snapping them and if you see, if you see this one here it says snap the vertices if i uncheck that and then uh, you may be able to see it. if i move this nothing happens because they're not snapping to each other if i click this on snap then as soon as i get close to them here zack, now this is they snapped and if you also if you try to move them away it takes a little bit of an effort it's like a, they're attracted magnetically and this also works if you you know just get these close to each other and then move out and then if i click here you may not have seen that but it snapped right onto the other one they're now perfectly joined so in explain there should be no gap sometimes there is it depends on you know some some very very intricate things like uh, elevation and and so on but uh, there should in all most cases be no gap between these now if um, that is fine with you and you want two separate polygons that's okay but you can also join them again of course you can select these two and then hold down control select these now we got four nodes you can see moving that closer you got these four nodes um, 
together. Actually, this is wrong. I'm, I have to select the polygons, I think. So select this one, control, select this one. I have two polygons and I'm going to merge them and see they turned into one. I just have one grandmother. This works the same for areas. It works the same for taxiways, polygons. Also later you will see it works for lines. It works for facades. So all the stuff that I'm explaining now works uh, for, for many, many other things in wet I know it's kind of boring and it's a lot, but um, this this is important. And of course, you can experiment with that. And uh, you can also um, read in the online manual. They explain how all this stuff works. And uh, it's probably a little different approach to what I'm telling you. It may stick a little better. Um, Duplicating areas. Okay, this is another one important. You will really wear out your control shift D for duplicate keys. Uh, this is something that just like having the V and the M key, it's like a first person shooter where you have your, your hands on, on, you know, W, S, A, and D, and it's all automatical. And the same is control shift D. It's a very, very uh, convenient feature. You can also trigger it by going. Um, edit duplicate and then you have duplicate in place and it also says you here control shift d this one we'll talk about later but control shift d is what you would want to click here or with the keyboard and you see now we have two grandmothers you can see that because they're right on top of each other but if i move one here we go and i go control shift d again oops this is the problem see i'm i'm in uh, camtasia now and uh, it switches to this little stupid little thing i have to use this one but you can just click Control Shift D, Control Shift D, and make many, many instances of something. Maybe, for example, you want to do these little taxiways. You don't want to draw them all one by one by one. So I just make one and then Control Shift D, 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 and you know, or you can pick a couple. For example, I want to pick these two. And okay, this is this is something nice to show you. I'm going to do Control Shift D here. I picked. I tried to select this one. I did a little stupid thing and just selected the nodes instead of the polygon. I'm going to duplicate them. And now I try to move the whole thing. And what happened? Nothing. I just see I duplicated the nodes. I didn't even I don't even notice, but if I try to grab this one, see there are two on top of each other. So this is this is also a nice effect that you can see sometimes if you cross over your own line, so to say, if you don't make a contiguous inside line, you get this effect that the area turns invisible. So don't do that. You also get a validation warning for that. But um, yeah, I duplicated the nodes. I didn't duplicate the polygon. That was kind of stupid. So I'm going to hit Control Z. Now I should be okay. Yes, I am okay. Now see, there's only one node when I select this. Uh, it's really easy to mess yourself up. So be careful, pick this one and then control, also pick this one. And now if you go edit, duplicate, you have four instances and you can move them together. See, they're both selected still. Now they still move together or use the marquee tool. Then it's easier to see what you're doing. And um, of course, you can also grab all these and you can rotate them or whatever you want to do. This is it's wet has gotten really, really versatile. There's a solution for every problem almost. And uh, it's just a matter of getting into the habit of doing all this stuff. Now, um, we're not quite done yet. There's still another important uh, concept to do, and that is doing curves. You can see that a lot of the taxiways, a lot of the areas that you will do have curves. And how would you do that? I'm just going to delete these taxiways here and uh, these polygons, delete this one as well. I'm going to uh, do this little taxiway here together. With okay, I'm doing a taxiway starting over here starting over here now i'm going to show you how to make a nice curve the way that explain really wants it if you just click once you place a regular node and if you click and hold you place a bezier node if you see i'm pulling out these we call these control handles this little grayish line and if i stretch it or make it shorter if i turn it you can see that the line basically uh, turns with it and 
takes a little experience, I would let go right here, and then I make the next node over here. And you can see that we now have a smooth line. Let's uh, finish the taxiway real quick. Make another Bezier node over here. And done. Now we have this taxiway. And uh, if I go back to the vertex tool, I can change the nodes for position, of course change this node for position but i can also change the curvature by making these longer making these shorter making turning these and you know making the curve fit what's there on the picture underneath see what i did here i uh, stretched out the text away underneath the runway that is the recommended way of doing it because the runway will draw over the taxiway anyway and you don't want to you know cut it really really short like this and then you know maybe by accident you have a little gap here and it looks really stupid in the in the simulator so just you know give yourself some room and do it like this maybe someone else moves the runway by a few inches later on and um, if you do it like this then you future proof your airport against that you can move it a little bit and it will still uh, there still be a nice joint between taxiway and runway okay that was a little excursion so now we have this node and also important to know this is the way i like to do my curves i put a regular node at the beginning and at the end and then do a bezier node in between of course there's also different ones where if you look at the online menu, you can see all the different ways of switching the nodes back and forth. There are also Bezier nodes with only one control handle, which means they would be straight on one side and then curvy on the other side. You could use those two to make basically the same one. But this is the way I like to do it because then you're always guaranteed that you have a nice straight stretch between this node and this node. And um, some, let's um, show you something if I click on this arrow with the shift key, you see it turns into a regular one. If I hold down the alt key and click and drag, it turns into a Bezier node. I can do the same thing here, hold down, alt key, click and drag, see it turns into a Bezier node. And some people, um, they make their uh, turns like, like this. They, they make a Bezier node here and then they stretch this out and see it also kind of works but if you really look at it then this area over here is not perfectly straight unless you really make this arrow go straight down the middle if you just slant a little bit and it's something that you may not even see while you work on it in wet then you would get a curvy line from this spot to this spot and not only does it look bad and explain you will see when you when you look at this this turn and explain it's not perfectly smooth like you see it here in wet explain chops that up into little segments and uh, the higher your rendering settings the, the closer these segments or the shorter these segments are and the more perfect the curve it is but especially on lower rendering settings you will see little great straight stretches here 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 and um, you would also see them over here which looks kind of stupid and also increases the rendering load so if you have a straight stretch of area either polygon or textway make sure that it's not done by a Bezier curve. There's one little thing that they also added in one of the recent wet things I want to show you and that is matching um, Bezier curves with different uh, polygons. Let's say you have this taxiway and you want to have a little asphalt shoulder. You say, you know, this by my taxiway, they have a little area here where they uh, place the little shoulder uh, in case the aircraft run over it. So I'm just fashioning that with a polygon. See, now I have my uh, taxiway here and I have my polygon over here and of course I don't want a gap here you can see there's a gap already here icky icky so I'm going to snap these together snap oops here we go and I'm going to snap these together snap and I'm just going to snap these together and I'm done right nope wrong because you can see the gap is still there because we have this one here and then we have this one here they don't match now what we used to do is we used to um, move this one until it kind of like here, here it is here it is snapped the other one see you can if I switch back and forth you can kind of like see where this 
handle ends and then I can go and go snap now it is now they're snapped now I have a perfect uh, joint but this is you know okay for one but sometimes let's say I did this whole taxiway away with the shoulder um, that is way too much so what you want to do is you just have to select the one that you want to match to the other one here we go. So this is this is how it's done. They have to be snapped. The nodes have to be snapped. Of course, the, the one that's supposed to match and also the next ones, uh, they both have to be unlocked and you have to select the one that you want snapped to the other one. Do that again, edit, match busy handles and you see it snaps to the other ones. And if you have a big stretch, uh, then that's very convenient. Now we have these green surfaces uh, that you see on lots of airports and uh, adding those manually is a pain, but if you can use at least the matching BZ handle option, then uh, that really, really works.